Hello everyone and welcome back to the A Traveling Knitter channel. My name is Steph and today's video is going to be my July wrap up, which is where I talk about the books that I read in the month of July. I deviated from the TBR list, you know, like normal, but um, I read some of them. Unfortunately, most of them I don't have. I went to the library and read them at said library and then returned them. Some of them I didn't even check out. I just read while I was there. Um, does anyone else do that? Like, I love libraries so much. I think a big part of it is, uh, especially right now, my apartment is so small that there's just there's only so many places I can go inside of my apartment. Um, if my barn door is open uh, and I sit over on that side, I can see every single part of my apartment. I can see my bedrooms, closet, kitchen, living room, dining room, door, bathroom. I can see all of it. So it's, it's a small space. It's not as small as these like micro apartments that I see. Um, in some Asian countries, but for Ohio, I guess I could say for Ohio, it's pretty dang small. So anyway, um, I, I just love going to the library. I've always loved it. Even when I was little, I loved um, being dropped off at the library and then just chilling and reading books. And it, it's, I just love it so much. And I still do that as an adult. I am 30 years old and I will still spend hours at the library so i will sometimes just go and pick an area to sit at and then i will read sometimes I even bring my library book that i currently have and go to the library to read it and then i don't finish it and then i just bring it back it's i just enjoy the change of scenery and libraries are they're just nice at least most libraries that i've been in five total books I read predominantly fantasy. I'm definitely in a fantasy mood and I I believe it stems from the uh, desire to just not not be in the present <laughs> to just you know be somewhere else so lots of fantasy. Book number one that I read is actually a novelette and it is The Tailor by Leigh Bardugan. Blah, blah, blah. Kenya. Okay, so the first book that I read was The Tailor by Leigh Bardugo. This is part of the Grishaverse or Shadow and Bone series. It's considered 1.5, but it's, I have it in the back of my of book too. So honestly, you can read it whenever, um, definitely after the first book, um, but that that follows Genya, who you're introduced to in the first Shadow and Bone book. And she is, I forget what she's called, but she's the one that can manipulate how you look. So can beautiful, so she's like the personal slave, honestly, to the queen to make, make sure the queen looks good, but she, you know, can beautify you, beautifies herself all that jazz. So it's a bit more of her background and how she got to be in that position. So it um, kind of spoils parts of the first book. So that's why I recommend um, reading it either between one and two or between two and three or, or after. So as long as you read the first one first. I, I gave this one three stars because it was fine. I felt like after reading the second book, you already knew that story. So I felt like it didn't really add much to the background. Um, but since it's there, I read it. Like, it's no big deal. If it was not available in my book or not available in Kindle, I don't think I would have spent a lot of energy trying to track down that novelette. So... Book number two that I read is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. This is book two to the Bone 
wow, why did I just like lose it to the Shadow and Bone series? Which uh, again, recap, follows Alina and her best friend, romantic interest, Mal, as they um, essentially become who they're meant to be. <laughs> like, uh, I always have such a hard time recapping when I don't have that book in front of me because I don't know what is spoilery and what's on the back. Also, the Netflix show is out and I feel like a lot of people are watching that instead of reading the book. But essentially, there is something called the fold which separates the kingdom or the land and I think there's a map. It's called the unsee in here, but I thought it was just called the fold, but uh, it's right there, right? So separates the villages and um, Oh, in the first crossing, Alina and Mal are on this like ship through the crossing and there are these monsters that are in the fold and instead of everyone dying, Alina's suppressed magic just appears and she's able to save the ship. Not everyone on it, um, so then that basically makes the Darkling pay attention the darkling is like the king's right hand man as man essentially now that's kind of the beginning the second one is very different from that recap and i can't really go into it because it does spoil the majority of the first one i really liked this this book so far the second book is my favorite um, I hope to read the third book, um, Ruin and Rising, in August. So we'll see if I still think this is the best one or if I think the third one is the best one. But I thought this was a fantastic second book. I enjoyed it much more than the first one because there is an introduction um, to a new character and this new character is with you for the majority of the book. And I loved that new character. Like that, that person is my favorite character at this point. They are the greatest. And I definitely have a type when it comes to literary characters. It's typically the, um, the go, like they're, they kind of just like slide through. It's kind of like Jack Sparrow. Like things just always work out for them. Um, they plan everything, but that doesn't necessarily look like they planned everything. Um, most everyone really likes hanging out with them, enjoys their company. And yeah, so that's typically my favorite literary character and you've got one in here. So really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this book four stars. Next one is a a uh, graphic novel and it is A Thief Among the Trees by Saba Tahir and it is the graphic novel prequels that um, are for an ember in the ashes and this was fantastic. I didn't, I didn't expect to love it as much as I did but honestly why wouldn't I expect to love it? I love An Ember in the Ashes. It is such a good quartet. It's so good. Um, one of like a part of my tattoo is for that book series. So of course I loved the prequel and there are going to be more. So the prequel follows Helene and Elias as um, when they're fivers and how they're like the mission to infiltrate that uh, not Black Hill, but the Blackguard camp or the masks camp. And I mean, it was, it was hard hitting just like the books are. And it's fantastic. You know, you're introduced to characters that they mention in the, okay, I don't like, that doesn't look good with my hair back. This came out, so it's not like I intentionally did this to my hair. Yeah, I don't like the way that looks, but I think it looks worse tucked behind my ear. <laughs> okay, so you're introduced to a character that you are aware of in the books, um, that he dies in that um, 
challenge. And then you're also seeing the twins, Marcus and the other one. Uh, you're seeing them as fibers as well. So it was just, it was good. I really enjoyed it. Very much enjoyed it. I look forward to reading the other ones and I even thought about buying them because I thought that was, it was really, really good and the artwork is really nice too. And I gave it a five stars. And then I read another uh, graphic novel. This one was The Daughters of Wise or Ease. I'm not sure, or Yuz. I'm not sure how to pronounce that Y-S portion in the title. And this is by M.T. Anderson. So this was a fairy tale. And I'd never heard of this, but it was about these two sisters and this father. So he falls in love with this like witchy woman and the witchy woman has two, da two daughters and one is very much into like nature and not being in the confines of the castle and the other daughter is more she's she's in the castle she's doing what her uh father says to do and it's i again i'd never heard of this fairy tale and it was very interesting the artwork was really great just like most fairy tales it was pretty gruesome there is murder there is death there is betrayal there's um sadness I really I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot and I highly recommend picking up because it was a quick and entertaining read and I gave it four stars. Next up the only like fiction novel of this month is Open Waters by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is a short book and it is told in second person and you primarily follow one main character, um, a black man in London, and then this black girl who he is essentially in love with. And it just, it, I think it's one summer or one year and something happens to, a traumatic event occurs in the black man's life and he goes through a pit of, of depression and anger and lashing out and it was like it felt like slam poetry to me reading it felt like someone was you know speaking to me with that slam poetry beat um the second person was was a little bit rough to get into. Second person is never my favorite to read. Um, and I, I think it's hard, which is probably why not a lot of books are written in second person. Um, so yeah, it's short. It's not even like dealing with grief. It's kind of just telling you about this man and how this thing it's not small, but how this event then affects so much of his life, even though he directly wasn't hard. Like, it's hard to say. It's If you've read it, I think you understand what I'm saying. Like, he was, he's a, like, he wasn't killed. He wasn't injured. It was just someone that he knew. But even then, he didn't really know that person but I think it's reflecting on society that yes I know this person because this person is me does that make sense like you're seeing a reflection of yourself um so yeah open waters it, I'm pretty sure it's a debut novel as well so I thought it was a very strong book it was very quick easy to read um and yeah I ended up giving that book four stars. Next up, another fantasy book, and it is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr, Tamsin Murrier, 
for Tamsin Mir. Okay. I thought I was going to just fall head over heels for this book. It took me how long? How long? About 150 pages to start enjoying this book. This book is confusing. The plot is confusing. I didn't understand why they were going to this other planet. I didn't understand the relation between Gideon and Harrowhawk. Um, I didn't understand why they hated each other. I did, there was almost like no explanation. And then on top of it, till the end of this book, I was referring to these two pages that give you the names of the characters because the name of the characters have so many syllables and there's just something about multiple syllables that makes it hard for me to remember the difference between them. So like, for example, you've got Harrowhawk Nonagasimus. So characters call her Harrow, Harrowhawk, and Nonagasimus. Then you have like the parents, which is Pelamina Novenarius or Primarch Nonus Vain, no, Vianus. And obviously, probably I'm not pronouncing these correctly. Um, you have Coronabeth Tridentarius, Ayante Tridentarius, Nabarius Turn, and then they all have nicknames. Like, Niberius' nickname was Bab, I think. No, I think it's Bab was his nickname. Um, Dulcinea Septimus and Protesilus Ed, Ebdoma. His nickname is Pro. Uh, Silas Octokisserone. Call him Ash. That was like the easiest one to remember. Uh, Camilla Hecht. Easier. Palamede Sectus. Jean Marie Chator. Judith doiteros like it was just a lot it was a lot so i constantly had to refer to the list of names for this book which yeah i i literally had like a little post-it note to like get me back to that section constantly while reading this book yeah, so the plot was confusing. It wasn't really until halfway through that I really understood what everyone was doing. Um, essentially, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the movie Clue, I guess, where a bunch of people are locked in this house and, um, oh, maybe that's giving it away, but they're trying to solve a puzzle that they don't understand and most of them don't know that there is a puzzle. So yeah, um, the banter was entertaining but also confusing. Like a lot of the times I didn't understand where the banter was coming from and what they were referencing. It was like a bunch of inside jokes that just I didn't understand and thus it wasn't funny. So yeah, but the second half, almost like the the last third is where I really got into it and I breezed through this. So the beginning took forever. Um, and I also will say the margins and the pay, like the breaks are a lot smaller than some of the other books that, um, or some of the recent books that I've read. So this took, this just felt like it took a really, really long time. Um, it's 444 pages, but it felt like a lot longer than that. I am going to read the second book though. And I'm, I'm very curious because I can't give it away, but something happens at the end of this book that is, I think, very unique to books and movies for that matter. And I'm very interested to see if it's 
maintained in the other books or if it's a haha got you actually no this is what happened kind of deal so I am interested to read the next book I don't know if I'll get to it very soon because again this was this was just wasn't as easy to get through as I would think and I did give this four out of five stars wasn't quite a three um, definitely it wasn't a five so a good four stars next up I read a manga and it is Yakuza Lover volume one by Nozomi Mino so I read this because one of my uh, favorite booktubers had recommended this as an adult manga to read and <sighs> yeah I didn't like it I didn't think it was good um essentially your main character she um insta loves falls in love with this guy who is a yakuza he's like a a boss leader for essentially the mob of japan and um it there's there's like no development at all and it's basically just them getting together and then having sex so I didn't think it was good. It was fine. Um, I, I'm not gonna read the rest of them if they come out in English. I, it, to me, it wasn't worth it. Um, I reserve one stars for books that I despise. So uh, this is gonna get a two star because I didn't despise it. I just, I didn't think it was good. So, distinction. And then lastly, I did read the second Jackie Faber book, which is Curse of the Blue Tattoo by L.A. Mayer. And uh, I listened to it on audiobook. It was fantastic, just like I remember it being. Uh, Jackie Faber is the... So she disguises herself as a boy to get onto the HMS Dolphin and be a ship's boy and goes on a bunch of adventures. They're fantastic. The second book is after she has departed the HMS Dolphin, she is sent to the Mrs. Lawson or Peabody School for young girls um, just to learn to be a proper lady. Of course she can't more hijinks ensue. She solves a murder and it's just, it's fantastic. You're introduced to Ezra who in the later books is her lawyer. She employs him as her lawyer and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, and you are introduced to her, um, her best friend and her brother, the brother or the best friend's brother. So it's fantastic. If you're gonna get one thing out of this this list today is please read the Jackie Faber series because they're just so good. And I gave it five out of five stars. Again, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Let me know if you have read any of those books or any of them sound interesting to you down below or in any of the social medias that I would have shown at the beginning of the episode. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!